So I wanted to I wanted to show you guys the uh Yo Zordon, what's up man? I wanted to show you guys the uh the Italian and German versions of the opera. Okay? Cuz it's way better than the English one. So I wanted to show I wanted you guys to see and hear it for yourself. Let's see. All right, don't don't judge any of my searches, please. Uh all right. Um let's see. Uh FF6 Pixel Remaster Opera Italian. Let's see. Oh, here it is in just all languages. Let's see if you could. Uh... All right, here. All right, Italian is the second. So we'll. I'll put it up a little bit. So yeah, you could uh, kind of hear the voices here. I mean, not bad. I don't hate it. But listen to this. There you go. I don't know how to speak Italian and I don't know how to read Italian. I wish I could. I could I could give you guys a nice little treat here. Maybe I'll I'll try the German one. I haven't read and spoken German in at least 10 years. Sing it, my dude. Let's hear it. He's really good, but wait till you hear the Maria singer.
You weren't into the live opera thing? I mean, I, th I mean, I think it's a, it was a great opportunity. I mean, it's clear that Nobio Oimatsu really has like a, a desire to, to, uh, contribute musically to, uh, a little bit more than just background music, you know? Uh, Story-wise, I don't know if she's a opera singer, but I mean the the don't the characters all act surprised to hear it? So it's kind of like uh, they never said she wasn't a good singer either, <laughs> you know. So it's like it could be one of those things where she just never did it, and now she did. I wonder what it sounds like in Japanese. I think I like the Draco singer in Japanese a little bit better than the Italian one. Yo, what's up, Angel? Right now we are comparing the different the different language singers from the opera singer in uh, FF6. Yeah, see, this is just this one it's just a little flat, you know? I'm doing all right. Just uh wrapping up a nice Final Fantasy stream with a little bit of music. Yeah, like her, the voice sounds just a little flat, right? Like if you listen to the like she has like a little bit of a Like it just it just doesn't have the same the powerful vocals. It doesn't sound like an opera at all. It just sounds like singing kind of. Wonder about the French one now. That's not bad. This one's not bad either.
Let's try the Korean one. Oh, that's right. You're in Quebec, right? Or do you uh, do you speak or understand French? I guess you you must have to if you live there, right? Aren't all the road signs and everything in French? Yeah, see, this is just like regular old, regular old singing. This doesn't sound like opera, right? I heard the German one was good, too. That's not bad. There's one more. Let's see what Spanish got. German's good. It, it's very close to English. Which makes it pretty easy to, to get by just by looking at the sentence structure. It's about the same. A lot of the words are very similar. I mean, it's pretty remarkable how they were able to translate it into all these languages and, like, have it, like, kind of make sense between all the languages, you know? You know what I mean? Because there's some, some sentences that just don't translate to other sentences. 
when you go from language to language, but to write a whole song and translate it, it's pretty, uh, pretty good stuff. I don't know. I think, for me, I think I'm going to go with Italian is my favorite, and probably French is the second best. I think, I, I think the Italian voice is, it, I don't know, it's just, it does sound li like a little bit more like an opera. Like it may be a little bit deeper, but. But yeah, I think English English kind of got the short stick, man. I think the English one is like my least favorite. Let's see. I don't know what do you guys think? I think I honestly I I think my favorite my favorite's the Italian and then the sec my second favorite is the French one. English might actually be my least favorite after hearing all of them. German was good too. Uh Jap Japanese was good, Korean was okay. But yeah, it it was a uh, It's definitely nice. I mean, I I know uh, uh, Captain said he he wasn't too uh, interested in them adding like the uh, the the music like that. Uh, but I I don't know. I feel like it was a it was a pretty cool idea, and it, it's something that I think Oimatsu has always kind of been interested in, right? He every single one of his games, there's some sort of like operatic, uh, like. What would you call that? Like an overture, like so, or some sort of. Uh, it's almost like the game is a musical, you know. Like there's like uh, each character has the the lead mo motif, you know. Is it light motif or lead motif? I think it's lead motif. Where it's like every time a certain character is on screen, it's like it plays the same melody, and it, it could change, you know, between moods like. You know, it could change like the pitch or the tempo and stuff like that. Oh, you just didn't like the English singing voice? Yeah, it, it was it was a little bit. I don't know. It it, it was kind of flat. It, I wish I wish they went with like the more operatic style. But yeah, that's that, that's kind of where I stand on. It. I I don't know. I thought it was cool. I, I thought it would be cool to compare it. Um, yeah, the, I mean, don't get me wrong. The English was fine. Um, I was just a little confused. I don't think they used uh, they didn't use the distant melody or, or the distant worlds uh, singer, right? Maybe they should have just done that because they already recorded this. Yeah, I could bring that up. Hold on, let me see. Real opera singers are probably expensive. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, like I feel like they had the money. They could they could have uh, got the hook up for like a day. Let's see. Let's do Distant Worlds. So like they did record it with uh, what's her name, Sarah. I 
can't find her name in the credits. A soldier from the West thinks of his love. See, they, they even read out the... Uh... See, listen to that. That's an opera voice. I don't know how much of this I could uh, play on here without getting a, a copyright strike, so I'm gonna I'm gonna chill with that. But I mean that that was a little bit more operatic, right? Like you could you could hear. I I don't know the exact terms, but like, what do you call it? Like, what what's it called when you sing like one note?
Well, may I, I I agree with uh, five one four. I'm I don't think we need another Joker. <coughs> I thought um, the Joaquin Phoenix movie was okay. Um, Jared Leto was I, I I did not like that at all. I I didn't like him as Joker at all. I thought it was it was a really dumb take. On a established character, like I know he wa he wanted to freshen him up, right? Do something that wasn't done before. I understand that, and I respect that. <coughs> but the end result just wasn't any any direction that I would have liked to see it go. Um, I loved the Dark Knight. I loved uh, Heath Ledger. Thought he was great. The thematics of establishing a brooding or contemplative Bruce Wayne basically means the Joker shows up. Right, because the Joker has has to be like a... Yeah. You know, it's funny. Like, I, I know Robert Pattinson is like... Uh, obviously, he made like his debut in like the public eye in the Twilight movies. But, like, he's done so much more since then that, like, since I never saw the Twilight movies, I don't even know him in that. So, in my eyes, he's just a really good actor. Like, he's not, like, a teen heartthrob guy. He's, like, I only know him as a good actor. The closest, the closest I know of him as a heartthrob actor was, uh, I know he was in Harry Potter. Right? He was in, uh, he was Cedric, right? Yeah, he was in the Goblet of Fire. I mean, he debuted and exited in the Goblet of Fire, you know? He, uh, he was not long for this world. Or that world, I should say. But yeah, I mean, he looks good as Batman. I think it looks, it's pretty cool. And, you know, actually thinking about what you're saying, Zordon, it does look kind of like the Batmobile from the Dark Knight. You know, the, what's it called? The Tumbler? So, I mean, that's cool, too. Is it supposed to be a, a prequel to that stuff? Because I feel like... No, it can't be, because that was a Batman origin story. Right? The bat Because it was Batman Begins, Dark Knight, and Dark Knight Rises. So that, that can't be... Like, this can't be a prequel to that, because that was the origin story. And he's Batman... In, in this movie, he's not Bruce Wayne turning into Batman, right? So we don't we don't need a we don't need a, a another origin story of Batman. I don't think. I think we're good on that. In fact, I'll go as far as to say none of the mainstream heroes at this point need an origin story ever again i don't need to see any of the original avengers origin story including spider-man i don't need to see batman origin superman wonder woman flash i don't think any of them ever need an origin story in my lifetime Maybe if they do some, like, lesser-known things. Then I could understand, but I think... Um, you know, th these main characters, like, yeah, Batman, definitely. Just, just start the movie in Batman, and Batman already exists. Batman already exists. We know who he is. Penguin, Joker, Riddler, all already have a life and we know who they are and just start the movie I think that's kind of what they did with Bane right in in Dark Knight 
like to an extent they kind of started uh <coughs> they kind of started um god damn it i have like a i have coffee throat let me go get my water All right, there we go. <clears throat> you know what I'm talking about. You ever have coffee throat? Where you just drink nothing but coffee? And then uh, just, every time you try to talk, it's just like, ah. Yeah, Jim Carrey was a good Riddler. I, I liked Batman Forever. Um, I didn't like Tommy Lee Jones. But yeah, Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey ran that. He was... Uh, Definitely, definitely was a great Riddler. And I, I forget, did they try to kind of like hint at a Riddler in uh, Dark Knight Rises? Paul Damos? There was no Riddler hint in Dark Knight Rises. I thought there was something like there was like a, a question mark somewhere or something like that. Or somebody had a name that was similar. Paul Dano. Let me see. Paul Dano. And he was the Riddler in this one? Oh, wow. Interesting. He's he's definitely got a face that looks like the Riddler. I like this guy. <laughs> he does a better Zodiac than Zodiac, huh? Yeah, Jim Carrey. Uh, Jim Carrey's a he's a. He's a very unique person. I definitely... He's a, he's a very interesting person. I, if you could ever, like, get into... Like, really get into Jim Carrey. And, like, learn a little bit about the psychology of how he does things. Like, it, it's almost like... It's... He, he does some method acting. While doing other, like... Like, he becomes a character. You know what I mean? Which I don't think... I, I'm not sure if that's method acting also. Or if there's one catch-all term for method acting. But, like, what Jim Carrey does is just, like, really unique. Like, he really tries to understand his character. And he, he tries to be that character, you know? But he doesn't do stuff like starve himself or, or try and, you know, lose 500 pounds or gain 500 pounds to play a character. You know, just just mentally, like psychology. He's really into like the psychology of the characters. Like him as Robotnik in the Sonic movie was so good. Yeah, exactly. See, we thought of it at the same time. He's so good. And in the new one, he's going to be like bald with the goggles. He's no longer going to be like the, uh, the Robotnik he was in the first one. So it's going to be even better. Because now he's he, not only is he going to be acting like Robotnik... But now he's gonna like, like kind of look how we remember Robotnik, which I think that's awesome. Oh man. The last CrossFit open workout is an absolute killer. <coughs> nice. I've just been running a lot. I haven't been doing any weight training or anything like that. I've, um, I'm just really trying to lose weight. I plateaued. Like I plateaued really hard. Like I hit, I hit 205, which is great, but I wanted to go under 200 pounds. And, um, 
I just can't. So I, I I changed it up. I stopped I stopped lifting, and I started running. Changed my diet up a little bit more. Um. But yeah, I I I, I started running, and I think it's starting to work. But the problem is, is sometimes I do feel under, underfed. I feel like don't have the the nutrients. Like I'll feel a little bit weak, a little bit like, uh, I think I should eat more. You hit 175 installed. Damn, man. I like 175 might be a little bit low for me. I don't think I don't think I could possibly hit that that without. Just being a completely different person. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'd I be happy in the 190s. Well, it's not so much that I care about my weight, like the number. Like if I looked exactly the same and felt exactly the same, but like the number changed, I that would be like an empty, empty victory. You know, it's like... Uh, it's a, a a few factors. Like one is, I feel like at that number, I usually feel a little bit normal. Like I feel like I can I can play sports, I can I'm mobile, I'm able to do pull ups, um, and I feel like I I can't do especially like I try to do body weight exercises, and I mean, it's just common knowledge that when you do body weight exercises um 200 pounds is harder to lift than 170 right so in order for me to be 200 pounds and do body weight exercises i need to get jacked <laughs> like i can't I, I i and i mean i was trying but the problem is then I wasn't really losing weight and it wasn't working out. It wasn't it wasn't the goal. I wasn't hitting the goals that I wanted and I didn't look and feel the way I wanted to look and feel. So I was like I was like let me do something else. And that's when I started running. Um I feel like I can do body weight exercises when I'm under 200 pounds. Like right now I can do push-ups, planks, uh, stuff like that. I can't quite do like pull-ups. I can do push-ups, not pull-ups. Um, it's tough. It, it's it. I feel like I feel like the number isn't what's important, but I know that at that number, um, I can hit my other goals. So that's that's why I focus on that number. Yeah, like performance, exactly. Like, and I I know for a fact that I ca I can't I can't run a, a a like a five minute mile at two hundred pounds. I just can't. I get winded. It's difficult. You know. Cycling 225 pound deadlifts. Oof. That is that is impressive, I will say. That is impressive. I, I feel like I could Yeah. Yeah, but the fitness the fitness journey has been a weird one for me because I think also as time goes on my needs change as well. Like Like right now, I think I definitely just need to eat better. I think that that's that's really the only thing that can get me where I need to be is eating better. Uh, I do I I eat pretty clean, like ninety percent of the time, but every once in a while, like I'll need that I'll need a fix of something, you know. I'd like to get out of that. And also, it it, it does uh, involve the uh, 
my clothes, you know? Like, I've, I don't like wearing extra baggy clothes. Um, I, and I also, I don't like my clothes being tight if I got, like, a big gut sticking out. Or if my arms are tiny. You know, it, there's a certain, certain, uh, uh, certain look I'm going for. And it, it definitely involves me being conscious of what my weight is. You're debating whether to work out tomorrow? Well, I, in my experience, if you overdo it, it's just as bad as not doing it sometimes. Like, I've overdone it and not given my body enough time to rest. And um, yeah, that actually, it's actually like a, a, a step back sometimes when that happens. Yeah, I mean, if it took too much out of you, I would say give it a rest day. Do maybe do like a easy cardio, like a a, a walk or a run. That's my uh, that's my go-to. If I feel like I shouldn't do nothing, but I feel like if I do something, it's going to be too much. I usually I go for like a super long walk. And by me, there's like a lot of hills. I live in a very hilly area. So it's good because I get like a walk that I could get inclines and declines. And uh, after I'm done walking, I usually feel it in my legs and a little bit in my abs and stuff. All right. Well, guys, I feel I could feel my eyes glazing over. I'm a bit tired. I tried to I tried to supplement my low energy with coffee, and I think it wore off. Unfortunately, I'm gonna I'm gonna call it here. Um, but I had a lot of fun. That, that was really cool. Uh, I wish I had more energy and I could do this forever. But sometimes you sometimes you gotta just tap out. Right, um, so that's what I'm gonna do now, and uh, I'll probably be back. Uh, I'll, maybe I'll do some more tomorrow. Maybe I'll try to at least get that dungeon done tomorrow that I started here. But I don't know. We we gotta see uh, how I'm feeling. Um, a lot of times on the weekends, I do enjoy just sitting down and having a drink, watching a movie, and uh, trying to appreciate life and the weather's getting better too so might uh might whip out the outside furniture sit outside for the night we got to see we'll play it by ear um i have again i always feel the i always feel it necessary to tell you guys uh because i used to be so active on social media uh however because of my mental health i am off social media However, I do have the going live announcements automated. It should hit Twitter and it should hit Discord. I'm still in Discord, so you could always talk to me in Discord. Um but Twitter, I am I'm out of there. I'm out of Twitter. I'm out of Instagram. Um so if you uh if you want the going live announcements uh, it, it's automated on Twitter and I'll announce stuff in Discord. But my point is, I don't know if I'm going to go live tomorrow or not yet. So if I am, that's that's where you'll hear about it. <laughs> or if you stumble upon, if you go if you go into Twitch and you see me, see me live, pop in, say hello. I'm going to try probably try and do the uh, that dungeon. At least try to get that dungeon done. All right, cool. So guys, thank you for watching. Thanks for hanging out. It was a lot of fun. And I'll see you next time. Good night.